Uh, Yo, what's sunny, going on? Up, so, Instant up? regret, man. Don't wear fucking nice trainers <laughs> when it's raining. <laughs> but I got out of the fucking Uber and the car was like going the wrong way. And I was like, stop now. How are you, bro? Yeah, yeah, John. I am good, I am good. Um, ready to squat? I'm ready to squat. So what I'm going to do, hey, YouTube, um, I'm here with my boy, Sunny Webster. So uh, we created a video some time ago and it was pretty popular. If you don't know, Sonny is a Olympic level weightlifter uh, and I'm a powerlifter. So we've got two completely different styles of squats. Um, sometimes I like to utilize the same squats that Sonny uses. So like high bar, <laughs> high bar front, front squats and, and uh, weightlifting shoes. Today I'm not gonna do that. Today I'm gonna go back to my powerlifting style of squats. I've got my flat soled shoes. I'm gonna, it's been months since I've wrapped my knees. So today's my reintroduction to knee wraps. And you're gonna see the style of squat that I use. And it's great that we have Sonny here today because uh, he's squatting as well, but it's gonna be completely different. Bollocks and in socks. Bollock, <laughs> bollocks in socks, ass to grass. Um, it's a, another great way of saying deep, deep, deep squats. So um, the depth of my squat is uh, powerlifting depth, which is where the crease of the hip needs to go below the top of the knee. Uh, there's no actual requirement for weightlifters to hit any depth in particular but it's just an advantage to go as deep as possible so they don't have to throw the bar as high. But he's gonna talk more about that. I'm not an expert weightlifter, he is. He's nailed it. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's, that's pretty much it, right? Well, yeah, so yeah. When I'm, I'm gonna do front squats today and obviously the lower you can get in the catch of a front squat means you don't have to pull the bar so high. So I'll be going deep today. <laughs> which, is, which is an interesting thing because he's a very technical weightlifter. He's very fast. Uh, and I've seen weightlifters that can squat more than him um, but he can clean more than them because he's just got the technique of throwing his body. I'm a weak weightlifter, but well, <laughs> you know, relative, relative relative to the highest level in the world we're talking, but from a technique perspective, as I said, he can clean and, and uh, snatch more weights than, I've, than me and I can, I can front squat more than him, but there's no way I could what get under. What did you do the other day? I did a 255 kilogram front squat. Um, and I think my best clean, I've never really been taught, I think my best clean's around 140 kilograms. Yeah. You know, like I just throwing myself under the bar aggressively. And you went deep with that. Yeah, I can, I, 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 I can squat deep. But, it's the front rack. But it's the speed as well, um, and how you aggressively throw your body under it. I don't know, maybe, maybe you've got some tips uh, for my audience on how you throw yourself so aggressively under the bar today, we'll see. Yeah, well the, the key thing for speed underneath the bar in the, in the clean is actually relaxing the upper body. A lot of people think when they're doing a clean or trying to get the bar on the shoulders, that they need to pull with the upper body. The minute you start pulling with the upper body, you put in the weight back through the floor and your feet won't want to move, which actually slows down the process of you moving underneath the bar. So I'm always focusing whenever I'm doing a clean is letting the acceleration come from the legs and then I'm dropping as the bar's still going up. That's how you get the speed into the bottom. Are you doing any cleans today? Yeah, I might do after the front squat. All right. There so you go, maybe, you'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe just for the video. Yeah, yeah. okay, so now um, before we do anything else, I'm gonna do some warm ups. Uh, I'm 38, Sonny, how old are you? 26. So he's warm, <laughs> he woke up warm. Um, with me, it's not that easy, especially, you know, we're approaching winter in Sydney. Uh, it's a little bit colder for me, so I like to be really warm before I start my session. And I'm gonna throw you, I'm gonna take you guys through some of my favorite activations that I've learned from one of the best rehabilitation specialists in the business, Andrew Locke. He's taught me uh, a bunch of different activations. The first one is gonna be a core activation. Uh, this isn't actually his, this came from uh, Professor Stuart McGill, which is one of the best spine researchers in the world. Uh, it's just a way to switch on my core because I'm going to be loading it with heavy weights today. So we'll do a core activation. Then after that, I'm going to do a glute activation. And then after that, um, something that you're going to notice about me that Sonny said I can't get in that clean position, the front rack position for a front squat. Um, as I'm getting bigger and stronger in my shoulders, I'm getting less and less mobile. So it's pretty hard for me to get under a barbell for a low bar squat. So Andrew's prescribed some great new shoulder mobility exercises, not stretches, mobilizations to help me warm up my shoulders and prime them to get under the bar. So this is going to be maybe about the, 10, the next 10, 15 minutes. And it's a great warm up for anyone at home who wants to do some squats. Um, a lot of- sold it to me, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> he, sold, he sold it, he sold it, I'll do it with you. It's not gonna hurt, let up. me tell you. No, that's let me tell up. you, so we're gonna do this now. So it's gonna be core, then glutes, then shoulders. Um, check it out. For anyone at home, <clears throat> great warm up. 
It's about 10 minutes of your time and it's gonna make you a lot more able to move well on your very first rep. A lot of the times I used to come into the barbell, my first warm up used to be just a barbell squat and I'd be cold and sore and not moving nicely. So I don't like that. I wanna get the very first rep under a barbell. I want it to move perfectly. So warm up time, let's do it. So big three, I'll tell you what it is. This is Professor Stuart McGill, put half a billion dollars worth of research into this activation exercise. Basically, it's a, it's a core routine uh, to switch on the core muscles and they say that uh, following from this movement, one to three hours afterwards, the core is engaged. Uh, that's how long my session's gonna be. It's gonna be, you know, probably about two hours. So this is gonna ensure that my core muscles are on for when I start loading it with a squat. Uh, and the same rule applies for all of my, like my glute activations. It's gonna ensure that my glutes are switched on by the time I start loading it. So starting big three with bird dogs. Seems like really fluffy exercises, but it's a warm up. Think of it like that. Okay, so 10 reps here. And just hold it at the end of each one. Yeah. Yep. We're up to four. I'm going to reach my arm forward to that wall and reach my leg back to that back wall. So it's not just raising the arm, it's, it's reaching out. Stretch out forward. And foot forward with your arm and back with your leg. Okay, so that's um, nice and easy. Now we're going to planks. 30 seconds here. So this is a rolling plank. So we start on the front, and then we go side to side. <clears throat> 10 seconds. Ten seconds to go. Okay, side plank. So all we're looking for here is straight spine. <clears throat> so no sagging of the hips. Keep the hips up. So this one's 15 seconds on each side. This is a little bit weaker. So this is the uh, internal external obliques, QL. These are weaker than the uh, six pack muscles. So we got a little bit less time here. 15 seconds each. Bum to bum. <laughs> bum to bum. Very romantic. <laughs> Training with Sunny. Five seconds to go. Okay, next curl ups. So the way that we do the curl ups is slightly different. So one leg out, so we're going to do 10, five each way, so both feet on the ground. But one leg straight out and one foot close to your bum. So this keeps the pelvis neutral. Fingertips on the top of the abs to feel it brace. Elbows up, chin to chest, uphold and drop. Elbows up, chin to chest, uphold and drop. Five like that. Five. Now swap feet. Are you like exhaling every? Uh, the breath, the breathing. Is, too big now. It's not as important. I breathe like a fat chick. <laughs> so don't uh, copy me with my breathing. I snore while I'm awake. <laughs> okay, so there's ten. So that's core active. Next, we're going to do glutes. So this is. Uh, this is Andrew Locke special. So this is clans. Real fluffy exercise. So the way we do this, bottom leg straight, top foot behind the bottom ankle. Now point your junk towards the ground. Good, and open 25 reps. The glutes roll is abduction and external rotation. And that's what we're getting with this. The glutes roll is also extension. We're not getting extension yet. We will though. Because it's such a short, quick movement, we do high reps, so 25 reps. Swap over. So bottom leg straight, top foot behind the bottom ankle, point the junk to the ground. A lot of people do their clams side on like this, and we're not letting gravity help us target these muscles on the side, which is glute mean, glute mead. So to help get gravity to help us, point the junk to the ground and open the hips like this. So 25 reps. This is really easy. So for most people, don't expect this to make you strong. 
It's an activation, it's a warm up. That's what people get confused with and they oh, it's not doing anything. It's not making me strong. Well, it's just the, the, the next stuff with the barbell is what's going to make us strong. Okay, next, uh, this is where we do the extension component. We do 10 on each side. So, single legged glute bridges. Is that right? Yep, yep, exactly. So, the, the tips, the, the cues to look for here is don't have the foot too close to the butt. When the foot's too close to the butt, it's, you're going to use too much quads. If it's too far away from the butt, it's going to be too much hamstring. <laughs> so, it's pretty hard to, some people, it's a little bit hard to feel it in the glutes. So you want to look for about 90 degrees at the knee. I'm probably a little bit off, so it doesn't matter too much. It doesn't have to be exactly 90, but you know you have to feel it in the butt. So this is hip joint extension. I'm going to get old one day, so it's best to start now. It is best to start now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trick that I see a lot of uh, older lifters that have no injuries. They do their warm-ups. They do their warm-ups. <laughs> okay, so for you, Sonny, I don't think you need to do the shoulder drill. You're not doing the, the back squats like me. I'm going to show you what Andrew uh, taught me. So it's basically the first step. You'll probably have a laugh at this, but a lot of big guys with poor shoulder mobility can't even put their hands behind their heads like this. So the first step is to just to have the mobility to do this. When I when he gave me this, I thought, damn, he's going to expose me, and I'm going to be one of those immobile people that doesn't have the mobility to achieve this position. But I, That's a simple, I can. A simple move. It's still super it, exactly all you're doing is again it's not a strengthening exercise you're just switching on all of the muscles at the back so next we add resistance so it's the same thing but I'm going to put this on my elbow so that I've got resistance and I'm going to do the same thing 10 reps easy not because 10 is better than 11 or 9 it's just I can count it on two hands <laughs> Keep it simple. I think that's the thing, it comes to mobility, there's so many different grades of difficulty. For sure. The... So some of the most beginners would be looking at me going, is this guy for real? Yeah, I am. <laughs> my shoulder mobility sucks. So that's it. So that's my warm up. Um, how long did that take? Just under 10 minutes. Yeah. So now, now I like to just warm up the actual movement. So I'm going to start squatting. Before I squat with an empty bar, I like to squat without an empty bar. So the first thing that I do is, I call this bend overs. So I'm not just squatting, I'm bending over and touching the floor. So in addition to warming up my quads and legs, which I'm gonna be using for my squats, I'm also putting a bunch of blood in my back. So the way that I squat, it's a very posterior chain dominant movement, hip dominant style of squats. So I wanna really warm up not just my legs, not just my glutes, not just my back, my whole body. Okay, so I just did first set with an empty bar. Uh, of course, that was after all of my warm ups. Uh, and that felt really good. Um, coming under the bar and grabbing the bar, a lot of people say, why are you holding it so wide? My shoulder mobility really, really sucks. And even usually when I don't do that drill with my shoulders, um, if, it even hurts to grab the bar and, and put it on my back in the low bar position. So just then, um, that's the first time I've done those activations that Andrew prescribed. Um, and and they're, they're here for good now. Uh, that really felt nice. So, um, yeah, so that's... 25 kilogram bar, two and a half kilogram clips on each side. So that's 30 kilograms was that start weight. Um, of course, you know, that's, that's very light. And now the first plate, uh, 25 on each side, and then I'm gonna go in smaller jumps. So this is, um, yeah, so this is gonna be 80 kilograms. And then after that, I'll probably, I don't know, I'll probably go up in, 20 to 25 kilogram jumps after that. Um, a rule that I have is that you need to earn the right to add weight to the bar. So just then, I squatted the empty bar. Actually, I did two sets of it. We only captured one of them on camera. Uh, I did two sets of that. 
a lot of the times I might do five sets of the empty bar. Uh, you need to earn the right to add weight to the bar. So what does that mean? If it doesn't look good, if it doesn't feel good, if something just doesn't feel right, I have to do it again. Um, so just then the fact that I did all my activations, I came under the bar nice and warm, I only had to do two sets of that. Now it's 80 kilograms. Same rules apply. I'll do a set of this. If it doesn't feel amazing, I'll do another set of it. If it feels easy like it should, um, I'll go up. So hopefully I only have to do one set, but it's always different. Um, unfortunately, if your goal is to get strong, it takes a long time to complete your session. I don't know how long we've been going for so far. It's been at least half an hour and we're still warming up. And then when I get to my top sets, I'm gonna be taking eight minutes between, eight minutes rest between sets. So my session is gonna take me two hours. So something that's good to understand is I have the time, this is my job. So I have the time to allocate to training like this. And a lot of people don't, and I completely respect that. It doesn't have to be your goal to be really, really, really strong. It's just mine. And that's because it's my career as well. So it makes sense that um, I allocate this type of time. But a lot of people can only put an hour towards their training. And if that's the case, you know, resting and doing all of that for this long probably isn't the way that I'd recommend that you train. But I also don't recommend that you have a goal uh, to kind of be the strongest person in the world. Um, if you have other commitments in your life, it's a pretty hard thing to juggle. This is my belt and uh, I don't actually need the belt for this, like I can squat a lot heavier without it, uh, but when I'm warming up with equipment, I like to feel it. So this is on a really loose setting, it's actually a looser belt, I've got another tighter belt that I use. It's a looser belt on a loose setting, just so that I can get used to all of the techniques of the equipment. I'm going to start wrapping my knees early as well, but it's a bit light for my knees, but the next set I probably will. Okay, 80 kilograms. I just squatted 310 kilograms paused a couple of weeks ago with sleeves, so I don't need wraps to squat this weight. Um, but again, it's been months since I've used knee wraps. So check out, I've got, this is my stiff wrap. That's what I'm gonna use on my top sets. It's really strong, it's really uncomfortable, um, but it, it bounces me up. This is really soft, really comfortable. It's a warm up wrap. Watch how softly I'm gonna put it on. That's five revolutions. Five revolutions of a really soft wrap. Um, it's more about the feel. It's a different technique. When you use knee wraps, the knee wrap goes really tight around the knee joint, which stops the knee from bending. So therefore, it acts as a very strong knee joint extensor. What are the muscles that extend the knee? Quads. So therefore, it acts as a really strong quadricep. So when you understand that, and then you understand how someone squats when they've got really strong quads, that's how you want to do it. So a really strong uh, quadricep squatter is typically more upright, so that they can use their strong quads. Someone with a really strong back will bend over a lot. They'll bend over at the hips a lot to use their really strong hips. So if I've got the advantage of having really, really, really strong quads now, how do I want to squat? To use these, you want to be upright. So, check it out. How have you found a bit of that? Mm, I had 260 in my mind, yeah. for like maybe pump out a set of 10, something like that. So blood is bad. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go for low reps and heavy, heavy weight, I'm going to teach myself. Groove it. Okay.
That's the first time I've had wraps on in months. Um, I would say um, March. So the, the start of March was when I last wore wraps. What are we now, March? April, May, June. So almost three months. Well, start, no, it is three months because it's the start of June. Yeah, so just over March. So I squatted, my last squat session with wraps was a 360 double when I came back from the Arnold's where um, Hafthor Bjornsson won uh, the Arnold Strongman Classic in Ohio. Then I came back that weekend, so that was on the 8th of, of March. And I came back that weekend, uh, a week after that, and squatted 360 kilograms for a double, which was really hard and really ugly, but I did it. Um, and then uh, our I was meant to be, I was speaking for a competition, and that competition got called off because of COVID, and uh, so I didn't squat anymore. I took the wraps off. And I started working on other stuff. So it's been a while since I've gone really heavy like that. Um, but anyway, that was my first time I used wraps in three months and it felt delicious. Hey Sonny, come and show me. Look at this, Whoa. send it, big Friday supplies. All right, I love it. <laughs> so Sonny's a bit of a fashionista and he's got his own uh, clothing label, apparel brand. That's sick. Come in. Slowly. Can I see what it says <laughs> at the back, Sonny? You gotta get, get me some, man. Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> the way that I like to do it is to go tighter and tighter every time. Um, my top set, like in competition, I use these and I get 10 revolutions. That's really tight. I'm probably um, not gonna go that tight today. So something um, that's important to know for people that are learning how to use uh, knee wraps, it's just like learning how to drive a car. Um, the first car that you learn in usually wouldn't be a Lamborghini or an F1 race car. Uh, it'd be something a lot slower than that. Uh, you don't need that type of performance when you're learning how to drive. Same with knee wraps, same with equipment for training. You don't need the most aggressive, the tightest, the biggest carryover equipment um, when you're learning how to do it. So, so even though I've got good experience in using wraps, it's been three months and I have to relearn how to do it. So that's five revolutions. That's what I had on the last set. Now I'm gonna do six. So I just go up by one revolution. Really simple. So this type of knee wrap, there's nothing to it. I start under the patella and I wrap with neat, even, so I go half an inch up, so one inch up every time, every revolution. Six revolutions. So this one, there's no crossing, there's just five up and then one across the center. Really simple knee wrap. Um, when I get those wraps on, I got a little bit more technical than that, but it's a really nice, comfortable wrap. See how I'm bending my knees now? Um, you can't really do that with the really tight ones, so. Okay. All right, good. Hundred and thirty kilograms. It feels so nice, let me tell you. I used to, when I'm using knee sleeves, I have to use my own muscles. Absolutely, it's a spot. I'm getting spotted by my, my training partners, one on each knee. What's going on, Benny? What's going on? 100 kilos on the bar. 100 kilos plan is today, gonna to go up to 205 front squat would be nice, but from the first two sets I've done, I think 180 will be hard. <laughs> it's not feeling good, but Let's check it out. I never judge a session on the first few sets. We might warm up.
155 kilograms next. So we got started at 80, we go 25 kilogram jumps. Um, and I'm gonna go tighter again. This time I'm gonna try a different wrap. Four up, X over the patella, and one directly around. So that's gonna be seven revolutions now. In revolutions for the knees, maybe nine. I'll go nine. Ten. Ten's hard for me to wrap. Do you know what I mean? Like I have to, I have to build the tolerance in my hands. This takes like grip strength as well and grip endurance. So my hands, so it's like this. Imagine going into a big set and your hands are fucked. It's like you need to grab the bar, you know? And so that's what happens as well. I lose the endurance in my hands. And coming into a set, so like right now they're fine because I'm not wrapping them that tight. But I get to a point where my hands are fatigued. I'm puffed out from wrapping it so hard. And then it's like, oh, I need a couple of minutes. But I don't have a couple of minutes because I'm cutting circulation in my legs, so I gotta go before I lose my legs. Uh, what have I got, 150. So the next thing I did, I went on a tighter notch on my belt as well. So, seven revolutions on the knees with soft wraps, and a little bit tighter belt set. Singles. I keep on having to smile after I do a set. That's uh, really easy. <laughs> uh, those knee wraps, I'm, like the hard part about spotting with knee wraps is precision. So what I'm going for is aiming to get right in the hole, hit it like the perfect depth, and then pop, little bounce at the end. So I'm using a lot of energy, controlling it, controlling it, and then and then I do nothing, and then it just. It just stands up for me. Four up. X over the patella. And then two over. So that's eight revolutions now. So you can see the happiness in his face to have them back in his hands. It's probably like now. a weightlifter using straps to snatch. <laughs> like when I get used to this, it gives me 50 kilograms. Yeah. So what were you going for today? Like over 200 kilo front squat? Imagine I said, what would you like? How would you like if we could do 250 today? You know? Yeah. That's how it feels. It's like, okay, that was good, yeah, yeah. Fell forward a little bit, so it clipped the racks. I'll probably get someone to uh, help me with the rack next, but that was a little bit off the line, came a little bit forward. So on this way, it's fine, looks easy, looks like there's no problem, but that's my instant feedback that I was offline. Mm -hmm. And if I try and do that with a heavy weight, it won't come up. So that's bar path is the concern so the next set like that came forward by this much that's all and it clipped the rack barely clipped the rack so it's no big deal really but if i come forward by this much with my working set today uh i might not get the rep and my working set i don't know i had the number 260 260 kilograms in my mind today so what are we now? 180, next set, 205, 230, 255. I'm gonna go up and bigger. I'm gonna use different wraps now. And I'm gonna take a slightly bigger jump. I'll take a 30 kilo jump for the next set. So that,
I can take three more jumps. So, 210, 235, 260. Now, let's go, Heavy duty wraps, these are my favorite ones. So this is the Lily Bridge wraps, uh, made by Pioneer. Same place that made my belt, Pioneer. Uh, so General Leathercraft, Pioneer, it's the same company. These ones, uh, there's actually stiffer. You can get stiffer than these. But stiffer isn't always better when we're talking about knee wraps, that is. But for the purpose of this, it's comfort as well. Uh, which sometimes if you think, you know, um, wrap it on as tight as you can so you can get the most out of it um, if it's too uncomfortable and too painful it interferes <laughs> so that's seven revolutions the set before was eight revolutions but it was a softer knee wrap um, so this seven on the heavy duty knee wrap is going to be Stronger than eight on the softer wrap.
here's the thing. Sonny just asked me if I'm gonna do a back down set. From that one, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna train another session later on in the day. I've got a few meetings, and this is unfortunately how I have to schedule my sessions because that just took me an hour and a half to do one set. And then the type of work that I'd like to do now is that was a hip dominant movement. Using knee wraps takes a lot of quads out of it. I don't need my quads because I got the knee wraps acting as quads. So the muscles that I'm really working is my posterior chain, my hip extensors. So the way that I structure my programming is I do my main work, which is my priority for the session. Then my secondary exercise, I consider what's the range of motion, what's the joint angles, what's the muscles that I've neglected in my main work. So let's answer it for this. What other muscles that I've neglected? We just said a low bar squat is hip dominant. Adding knee wraps is more hip dominant, takes quads out of it. So what have I neglected? Quads. So therefore, my supplementary exercises, which I could do now, but I'll tell you why I'm not gonna do it now. I could do it now, but I'm gonna do it this afternoon. It's gonna be something that allows me to target my quads. What's one of my favorite exercises to achieve that? Something like what Sonny's doing. <laughs> Have a look. Well, mm -hmm. apart from that, he just front squatted. Bollocks in socks. Deep front squats. Deep front squats. Uh, you know, look at the size of his legs. They're huge. He's a 95 kilo guy. I'm a 115 kilo guy. So I'm, I'm 20 kilograms bigger than him, but his quads are bigger than mine. How does that work? <laughs> Because and he squats 150 kilo more than me. And, and the body position that I'm able to get myself in allows me to shift a heavier load than what he's doing. So squat's nice for Sonny, but his goal is clean and jerk. For me, my goal is squat. That's what I'm getting graded on in my competition. So I need to be good at that. You're using all around that uh, recruitment of all your muscles. When I'm you using as many work. muscles as I can. This, uh, one of my squat mentors, Ernie Lillibridge Senior, taught me, if you can get your ears to contract <laughs> and help you lift that weight, that's what you're gonna do. So obviously, my ears didn't help me then. But what I tell you that I did use a lot of, hips, adductors, back, definitely used a bit of quads, but not as much as what he needs Mine's for his front squat. His is, well, with, a, with, a, with an ass like that, you can't deny that he's getting some solid glute work with all of his squat variations as well. But yeah, that's a quad dominant movement and that's something that I would like to get in this afternoon. Now, back to why I'm not doing it now. I've got a few choices. Train, keep doing my back down work and then go to my meeting or eat. Eat, <laughs> eat. that's my highest priority. So equally as important as your work is your recovery. And people always say, what's your favorite methods of recovering? Well, eating, sleeping, and hydration. Someone asked me the other day, like, because they were like, oh, what do you think about squatting every single day? And that's exactly that reason, isn't it? Like, you can't, why you can't squat every day? Yeah, well, the people that do, and that's what I say, it's like, if you enjoy it, I'll say go for it, but don't go heavy like this every day. You're not gonna recover. Anymore. No way, the recovery is equally as important. Otherwise, I would train all day, all night, and I wouldn't go to bed because I want to be that good. But that's not how it works. Uh, recovery, recovery, recovery. So on that note, I'm going to go and eat. What are you doing? Gonna He's going <laughs> to eat with me. So, you know, again, uh, for those out there that look at strong guys on the internet and say, you know, that's a goal for mine. A goal of mine one day to achieve that level of strength. Understand that it's, it's also our job um, Sonny's also an online coach. He specializes in coaching weightlifters. Uh, of course, CrossFitters use the weightlifting techniques as well. So a lot of his client base is CrossFit athletes, weightlifters. So that's what he does for a living. So this is the type of work that he does. And so he's able to allocate this amount of hours into his training because it's like spending the time at university. <laughs> but our university is under the barbell. Yeah. So 
For those out there that don't have the time, don't beat yourself up over it. You just gotta prioritize what's important to your life. If you got other priorities in your life, it doesn't make you a bad person that lifting weights isn't your number one priority. But for us, um, it is easy to prioritize. So on that note, it's food time. We're both gonna go and eat, and then I'm gonna train here in the afternoon. He'll probably go to another gym and train there. He's welcome to come back here anytime. But I'm gonna do my quad dominant squat variation this afternoon. Um, but Sonny Webster, thank you for joining us on our YouTube video. Thanks guys. It's been a while, it's been months since we've been able to create some content. So it's always great to have one of the world's best weightlifters join me for these sessions. Uh, where can we find you? At Sonny Webster GB. So that's um, on Instagram? Instagram, Facebook, and then of course sign up to my email list which you'll find via the link in my Instagram. We'll put it, we'll put it all in now and then I'm sure Sonny will be back for more of these sessions. Uh, click like, subscribe, if there's any comments underneath, uh, throw some questions in. If you want to see us talk about or train a certain way on our next session. Um, naked? No, I don't think I'll do naked. <laughs> People don't like the look of me naked. I thought that they did, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we'll, sa we'll save that for a different day. But thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.